was demolished in 1976 and created a few parking spaces uh, close by to the church entrance there. Uh, uh, Reverend Robert Walden, 1980 to 1998. Uh, this is the sanctuary in the 1980s. It's quite changed. Uh, note the chancel is uh, much broader. Uh, the choir is much higher, uh, so that a baptistry could be placed underneath the choir. Uh, the organ has come down from the choir loft. It is uh, on the floor of the sanctuary. Uh, there are murals painted by Harry Cochran uh, at the front of the church, different lights. Uh, you can't see the memorial windows, but uh, there are new memorial windows by this time. They, they were installed in the 19-teens. Um, uh, here's a women's retreat in about 2002. There was a uh, group of youth uh, who went to Broadalbin, New York on uh, a mission trip to renovate houses uh, in 1999. Uh, uh, Reverend Dave Clark, who is the present pastor. Uh, the, <laughs> you already got your problem. The, uh, <laughs> uh, the Easter sunrise services are held at Minot Center Grange Hall uh, ever since 1976. I assume that uh, Hester had something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Hester Gilpatrick is uh, a member of the uh, Minot uh, Center Grange. Uh, and so they've been holding a very nice uh, Easter sunrise services there. Uh, uh, Mark Thalander is was an organist at Crystal Cathedral in California. He was injured in an automobile accident that cost him his arm, but he continues with an organ uh, ministry that includes festivals of choral music by singers and church choirs throughout uh, the region. And here's a commercial. Uh, Court Street Baptist Church, in honor of our 150th anniversary, is having one of those festivals conducted by Mark Thalander, and any of you who have uh, talent to sing and want to sing, uh, we want as many singers as possible, uh, and the whole purpose is to get churches together. If uh, uh, you uh, uh, want to join us, uh, please uh, contact uh, any member of the church that's here or contact me. We'd be happy to uh, tell you more about it but we need to get on because we need to know about those Methodists. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for your uh, information, your, your feedback, and uh, your, uh, your attention. And so Betty, will, Betty Dexter will now make her presentation. She's the historian of uh, the Methodist Church, and uh, so we'll get her slide uh, show operating. Your, your feedback and uh, your, uh, your attention. And so Betty, will, Betty Dexter will now make her presentation. She's the historian of uh, the Methodist Church. And uh, so we'll get her slide uh, show operating. First of all, I want to say thank you, Norman Rose, because Norman Rose is the one who got me interested in the history of our church. As you know, Norman, cuts new newspaper articles, remember? And I hadn't done anything about it, but all of a sudden, one day he showed up with newspaper clippings and clippings and clippings and clippings, anything that said Methodism in it. So you really got me started on this. Thank you. It all began when the Methodist Episcopal Circuit rider Jesse Lee rode into Lewiston in 1794. Over the years, Auburn Methodists have worshipped in five different buildings. We have Park Street in Lewiston, mm -hmm. and notice Park Street in Lewiston, and then eventually it was Park Avenue in Auburn. Mm -hmm. So we went from park to park. <laughs> Uh, then we had, on uh, 
River and Drummond Street, we just moved into where the Congregationalists had left. Mm -hmm. Then Hampshire Street, mm -hmm. and then eventually, you can even see the Hampshire Street now, because you move down to Hampshire Street, it is now the Grange, what used to be the Grange Hall at Young's Corner, and now it's an apartment house, so you can see it right there. Okay, and then, <clears throat> all right, then we went, we went to High Street, and that's the High Street Methodist Church, which is now a parking lot, and then now we are over, this is where, what our church on Park Avenue looked like when it was first built. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can look and see where the where the Drummond Street. There was only one. Okay, uh, that was now called Drummond uh, River Street, not uh, not what we call it now. And so that's the way everything looked at that time. The Lewiston Bridge and so forth. And this was the church there. Thirty-one Methodist family separated from the Lewistons due to the inconvenience of the toll bridge which crossed the Androscoggin River. They paid toll of two cents to walk it, six cents to cross on horseback, and ten cents they were going to ride in a horse cart or a sleigh. Oh, and by the way, you can see this right up behind you. There's a complete, all the rings up there. Betty, was that a covered bridge? No. As I understand it, part of it was covered, but not all. Doug, I bet you know more than the, I do. The, uh, the, the, walk, the walkways were covered. Oh. Uh, yeah, so but part of it was, but not all of it. Church on the corner of Spring and Hampshire Street. Later, it was sold to the Grange, as I had mentioned, and they moved it by ox cart. Can you figure that? <laughs> taking your church apart and put it on ox cart and taking it all the way out to Young's Corner. And that's down below where you can see it now as apartment houses. find number 11, right here. Okay, that was the Universalist Church, which was demolished, and then the Methodist Church was put up there. In 1883, the main annual Methodist Episcopal Conference appointed Reverend Iris Spray, a man with iron in his blood and a vision <laughs> in his soul. Now, with so many Baptists here, you've got to learn something about Methodism. <laughs> <laughs> you have complete local autonomy. We do not. But over the years, most of the Methodist churches don't feel that they have the over people over them too much as just a regular constituent. We are aware <coughs> that our ministers are appointed. However, the district superintendent usually brings three different pastors for our... They try very, very hard to have the people want their ministers. Now, you have some advantages and some disadvantages of your system. In our system, without a pastor, one pastor goes and within a few weeks, another pastor comes. Now, there's a lot to be said for the fact that you have a long distance between. Now, our current pastor has been there for 14 years. We know that when his last others will graduate from high school, we will probably lose him. But he came through all those four boys. 